A really long time ago, a mysterious seed appeared from the heart of the Earth's forest. With the appearance of the seed, the forest dragon awakened from the moon. As the dragon unleashed itself, the entire moon was left destroyed. The dragon then made its way to the Earth, destroying anything and everything along its path. The Earth was devastated, the civilization destroyed, and the human race brought to the brink of extinction. Several hundred years later, Japan is now a dystopia with the forest covering almost all of its land. The whole country is surrounded by the forest on all sides and this was no ordinary forest. The forest had a mind of its own and could act of its own free will. The forest is governed by druids who are responsible to govern the water resources for both the forest and the humans that are still alive. Amongst the druids and the ever-expanding forest live the few humans who managed to survive the disaster several hundred years ago. There are two major cities in the New World, Ragna and Neutral City. The Neutral City is located in the heart of the forest, right above the pool of water that supplies water to both the forest and the humans. It's carved out into the ruins of the destroyed skyscrapers of the past. The city, as its name suggests, is a peaceful city that believes in the coexistence of humans alongside the forest. Ragna City, on the other hand, is a military-based city that is located in the desert area of the country. Ever since the city was built, it has only aimed to take over the country and eradicate the ever-expanding forest. One day, two young boys, Kane and Agito, of the neutral city, decide to race each other to see who reaches the pool of water at the bottom of the city first. The two boys haphazardly race through the city taking care to avoid waking the guard, who was guarding the pool. Kane and Nagito get a bit too carried away with the race and end up splashing themselves into the pool. The boys are soon surrounded by the druids who are enraged by the boys disturbing the sanctity of the forest pool. Kane quickly starts apologizing, but Agito once again dives into the pool to escape the other way around. As he goes deeper into the pool, he gets dragged into the current of a large waterfall and stumbles into a deep cavern within the pool. As Agito looks around, he suddenly finds a large machine hidden inside the cavern. He climbs onto it to examine what it was and finds several cryogenic pods. As he examines further, he accidentally opens up one of these pods. Inside the pod is a young girl, almost of the same age as Agito, asleep. As the pod opens, she too wakes up, still a bit confused as to where she was. Agito looks at her, but doesn't seem to be phased by her appearance or the fact that she appeared from inside a machine. Before Guido could explain anything to her, the cavern starts flooding with the water from the pool, and the two are forced to escape. There are no real ways out for them, but the girl uses her special tool, called Raban, to unlock one of the mechanized doors, which allows them to find a way out of the cavern and out into the city. When they finally reach outside, the girl introduces herself as Tula, and the two get acquainted. She looks around at the dystopian city before her. Almost immediately, Agito, Kane, and Tula are summoned before the leader of the neutral city, Yolda. She punishes Agito and Kane to work with the salvage team for a week after which Tula is brought before her. Yolda tells her that she wasn't the only human who had woken up from the machine, which explains why Agito wasn't scared to see her. There was another man, called Shinnok, who was also like her, but he had already left years ago for Ragna. Yolda gives her a choice to live in neutral city and assigns Kane, Agito, and their friend Minka to take care of Tula. Tula starts spending time in Neutral City and gets along pretty well with Agito and the others, however her mind still doesn't seem to understand the new world. She uses her Raban to contact others like her, but gets no response. She was all alone, and it bugged her almost as if all of this was her fault. Agito goes to calm her down and introduces her to his father. His father and the father of Kane and Minka are enhanced humans. Enhanced humans are humans who have received powers from the forest spirit. Their hair had turned white, and they gained exceptional powers. The two are the humans who had taken powers from the forest and created Neutral City. However, taking powers from the city meant that eventually, the powers had to be returned back to the forest. Agito's father was at the end of his life now, and he had started to transform into a tree and return back into the forest. This was the price to pay for the power. The old man glances once at Tula and realizes the predicament she was in. He simply tells her to let go of the past and be happy with what she has now, but Tula, however, is still not convinced. 
Elsewhere, Shunak receives the signal from Tula's Raban and sends some men to find her location. The men come all the way to Neutral City and end up staying in the local inn. An ignorant Minka who works in the inn lets the people know of Tula's whereabouts. Soon, Shunak, who was now a general of the Ragna forces, arrives at the gates of Neutral City to take Tula with her. Shunak introduces himself to Tula as her father, Dr. Shakul's friend, and tries to acquaint himself with her. Tula is still confused about herself and Shunak tries to take advantage of this and manipulates her to believe that with her and her Raban, they could save the planet and bring it back to what it formerly was. Agito tries to stop Tula from leaving, but he is not strong enough to fight against Chunak, who was also an enhanced human. During his stay at the neutral village, back when he was first revived from his sleep, he too had taken powers from the forest. Chunak takes Tula away with him. As they travel through the desert tracks and head to Ragna, Chunak reveals the true cause of the forest growing in the world. Several centuries ago, Dr. Shakul was working on the Afrosine program of the Earth. They had decided to mutate the plant cells in such a way that they could grow rapidly on their own. Their base of experimentation was on the moon. However, the experiment had gone south and the plant mutation had taken a different route. They had gone berserk, and soon the moon was destroyed and the Earth was left to its ruins. There was still hope, however. With the Raban tool that Tula has, they could still find the Environmental Defragmentation System, ESTOC, which could restore the Earth back to its former glory according to Shinnok. As soon as they reach Ragna, Tula, now convinced by Shinnok's words, uses her Raban to locate the ESTOC. The location is revealed to be nearby the mountains in Neutral City. Elsewhere, Agito's father passes away and his soul fuses with the forest spirit. After his passing, Agito also heads to the forest in hopes that he could find some way to bring Tula back. He makes his way to the heart of the forest and stumbles upon the spirits of the forest. The spirits are adamant that Tula will bring nothing but destruction upon their world, and Agito tries his best to convince them otherwise. He tells them that he would save Agito no matter what and asks for their power to help him. The forest spirits are skeptical about this, but they decide to lend the power of the forest to Agito. Soon Agito too transforms into an enhanced human with white hair and superhuman abilities. With his new powers, Agito immediately rushes to Ragna. He even encounters some of the soldiers along the way but is able to beat them pretty easily. He can slice through entire tanks and even missiles. Agito reaches the Ragna base just as Shinnok and Tula discover the location of the ESTOC. The soldiers there, however, are a bit too smart for him as they don't shoot him with regular bullets. They shoot him with bullets containing a gas that makes him unconscious. When Agito wakes up, he is bound to huge chains and locks around his hands and legs and is unable to move. Tula stands before him apologizing for his situation and issues him that she was the only hope for the old world to return, a world where the forest was under human control and not the other way around. Agito watches in agony as he watches Tula leave with Shinnok right before his eyes. As soon as they leave, a soldier arrives to put Agito out of his misery. Agito struggles to get the chains off his hands, but fails to do so until suddenly his hand starts transforming into a human-plant hybrid with exceptional power. It becomes a replica of the Hulk, and he easily escapes the chains. With his mutated arm intact, he chases after the train in which Tula and Shunak were heading to Neutral City. The speed of the train is no match for Agito, who almost immediately catches up. Shunak, however, manages to disassemble the back of the train just in time and cause an accident, leaving Agito behind in the rubble. By the time the accident happens, they had already reached nearby Neutral City, and so, Yulda quickly rushes to Agito's rescue. She notices him getting out of control and the forest taking control of his body and warns him that if he used too much power, he would be one with the forest spirit just like his father. Hearing this, Agito calms down and his hand returns back to normal. He then heads out once again in search of Tula. Elsewhere, Tula and Shunak reach the location of the Estoc. The Ragna general sent with them is excited and wants to accompany them inside, but Shunak had never planned on helping the Ragna people with their ambitions. He had a plan of his own. He announces his betrayal proudly and walks inside the Estoc alongside Tula. Immediately, Tula uses her Raban to start the Estoc. However, she soon realizes that the Estoc would not bring the world back to its former self. It would just destroy all life on the planet, including the forest. After the mass destruction, the people from the past who were asleep in the pods like Tula before would awake and find a new world to inhabit. 
Shunak also reveals that he was the one by whose carelessness the genetic modification of the plant cells had failed, and the Earth was destroyed. He wanted to make amends for his actions, and this was the only way. Tula tries to stop him, but he is an enhanced human and too powerful for her. The mountain where Estok was located turns into a massive weapon of mass destruction and starts causing havoc all around. Since it is nearby the neutral city, it heads straight towards it. The previously betrayed forces of Ragna and Kane's father from Neutral City work together to help the citizens to safety and prevent the S-Talk from moving further into the city. During all of this, Agito arrives inside the S-Talk and confronts Shunak. Shunak is simply too powerful for Agito to handle, so he is forced to use the full power of the forest. It turns him into an actual tree, but he is able to absorb Shunak within himself. While Shunak is distracted trying to escape Agito's trap, Tula goes and stops the S-Talk from causing further havoc. She uses the Raban to initiate an auto-self-destruct sequence. She returns to take Agito with her, but finds that he has already converted into a tree and is united with the Forest Spirit. Despite becoming one with the Forest Spirit, Agito's consciousness remains intact in another dimension. Shunak is there too, but having become one with the Forest, Shunak is now at peace and no longer intends to fight Agito. As Agito goes around the place, the forest reveals to him the truth about the relationship between itself and the humans. Agito learns that the genetic admixture that gives humans extraordinary strength and eventually turns them into trees is actually a two-way exchange. This meant that once an enhanced human was created by the forest, it not only changed the humans but also changes the forest. This causes the trees to give birth to new humans and giant fruits. Realizing that Agito can teach humanity that there is no need for either hostility or separation between themselves and the trees, the forest returns Agito to his true form and sends him out from the tree. Tula is extremely happy after seeing him alive and well, and the two manage to escape the destruction of the Estok just in time. With the humans and the forest saved, peace is once again restored in the world. In the end, Tula finally lets go of her past by throwing her Raban off a ledge. She vows to learn to live in and love the world that she was in. Most of the time, we as humans are really frightened of change. But we must always remember that as humans, it is in our nature to adapt and learn to appreciate what is around us. Appreciating the value of what we have and not dwindling on what we had is the only way to achieve true happiness. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for